Hello and welcome to the Home Designer 2020 Quick Start Demonstration. My name is Kendra and I'll be presenting today. We do have three different Home Designer software programs. I will be designing in Home Designer Professional for today's demonstration. Um, and just so you guys are aware, you can rent that software monthly. We also offer Home Designer Architectural and Home Designer Suites. Um, so as we go throughout today's demonstration, I will do my best to point out the features that are specific to the Home Designer Professional version. So in the demonstration, we'll begin by um, designing the floor plan and adjusting dimensions. We'll then cover adding in different floors and the foundation options. Um, we'll add in a roof, we'll go over the stairs tools, we'll do some kitchen design, we'll touch on the electrical and the framing, we'll show you some landscaping features, we'll cover the material list, and then we'll finish it off with a layout sheet. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to launch my Home Designer Professional software. And this is my startup options dialog. So from here you can open a new plan. You can also browse through your documents to open an existing plan. Off to the right you'll notice there's some getting started resources. These will take you over to our website if you'd like to review any training videos or download catalogs from the 3D library online. And then we also have this announcement section here. Um, so I'm going to come over under my recent files and I'm just going to open up this template plan that I have created for Home Designer 2020. So this is the user interface of the software. If you look across the top of your screen, this is where you're going to find all of your tools. Um, we also have these parent tool icons here. And if you select this, there is a um, child tool palette off to the left here. Um, and then we do have a library browser as well. This should automatically come up on the right hand side of your screen, but if you don't see that, you can come to the top of your screen here and select view, and then just select library browser and that will display. And here you can expand these folders to find a specific library item, or you can do a search in the search bar at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this for now. And I'm going to grab this straight exterior wall tool here. And I'm going to begin drawing out my layout. So I'm just going to click and drag to start drawing out a wall section here. And notice that I'm getting that temporary dimension that's displaying. I'm not going to worry too much about the dimensions right now because I'll come back in later and clean those up with my dimension tools. Um, but for now I'm just getting the basic shape of my layout here. And watch as I align these walls off to the left, I'm getting that indication that they're aligned. So then I can just connect those. And then I get this automatic exterior dimension that displays. If you don't see that, you can come up to the top of your screen here under your dimension tools and just select auto exterior dimension. Um, but it should display by default. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this in a 3D camera view. So at the top of my screen here I have my camera parent tool. If I select that I can come over here to the um, child toolbar palette off to the left. And then for your preferences for your home designer software you can also select to have this drop down option here. Um, and you'll find your preferences if you just go to edit and then down to preferences. Um, but under this my camera tools I'm going to grab this dollhouse view. And you can see how this room is generating in 3D. Now notice that I'm getting this stucco wall type here. So that is defined in my default. So if I come up here to edit, I can come down to default settings. And this will bring up my default settings options. I'm going to come down to walls and just select this exterior wall and hit edit. And this is going to bring up my exterior wall defaults. So here I can review the thickness of the wall. I can make adjustments to the structure, the roof, and the foundation. Um, and then I'm going to show you guys wall types here. Right now I'm using this siding six wall type. And Home Designer will come with a list of predefined wall types that you can select from. And this list may be different depending on which version of the software you have. And then with Home Designer Architectural and Professional, you can define and make adjustments to your wall type and create custom wall types. So if I'll, I'll just show you that dialog really quickly. Um, this will list out each individual layer of the wall and you can adjust the material as well as the thickness of that layer. So I'll go ahead and exit out of that and the defaults as well. Hit done. 
and I do want to show you guys how you can navigate this view a little bit. So up at the top of your screen here, you have this mouse orbit camera tool, and then you have some additional um, navigation options there as well. So with that mouse orbit camera tool, I can just click and drag my mouse around. I can also zoom in and out with my cursor, or if I hold that scroll bar down, I can pan around in my view. And another trick that I like to do while I'm designing is tile my views side by side. So there's a few different ways you can do that. If you come up to window at the top of your screen here, you have further control over your window display. Um, and you can either tile your windows horizontally or vertically. What I like to do is simply grab this tab here and pull it off to the side and then I'll get that blue indicator and I can let go. And then I can work in these views side by side here. Okay, great. So the next thing I want to do is come in and adjust the dimensions. Um, so before I begin with the dimensions, you'll notice that I still have my camera icon following my cursor, which means that tool is still selected. Um, so I'll need to drop that. And there's two ways to drop a tool. You can come up to the left of your screen here and use this Select Objects tool or you can also use the space bar on your keyboard as a shortcut and that will allow you to freely select objects again. Now to work with the dimensions, what you'll want to do is select the wall that you'd like to move and then select the dimension that you'd like to adjust and this is going to bring up an input dialog box where you can input the accurate um, dimension. So this wall is going to be 76 feet. Now Home Designer by default is going to use inches so I'll want to select the foot icon to be working with feet and then I'll hit enter on my keyboard um, and that will move that wall to exactly 76 feet wide. I'm going to come around in a clockwise direction, select a wall, select a dimension, and then input the accurate dimension there. Great, so that completes the exterior dimensions here. So I do want to reference these later, but for now I want to turn off the display of the dimensions just to clean up my view for you guys. So everything in Home Designer software is assigned to a layer, and then you can turn those layers on and off while you're working in your plan. Um, so I'm going to come up to the top of my screen to Tools, and then Display Options. And this is going to bring up my Layer Display Options dialog. So I'll just click in there and type in a D for dimension. This will filter to my dimensions and I can select my automatic dimension. And then notice that there's a check mark here under display. And then if I just remove that check mark, it's going to turn off the display in my plan view. And then for Home Designer Professional, you do have some additional tools for the properties of the selected layer. Um, but we don't need to get into those right now. So I'll just select OK and notice that that cleans up those dimensions there. So let's go ahead and add in some interior walls now. So I'm going to come back up to my wall parent tool here and you can see that I have got quite a few different tools to select from. Um, a foundation wall, pony wall, and then new with Home Designer 2020, there's a straight glass wall tool um, that's used for quickly creating a glass shower and then we have a straight glass pony wall as well which can be found in Home Designer Architectural and Home Designer Professional version 2020. But I'll go ahead and grab that interior wall here and it works very similar to the exterior walls. You just click and drag out a wall segment and then notice that I'm getting those temporary dimensions that display and then if I select a wall here I'll also get a temporary dimension that comes up. I'm going to come up to my dimension tools here. I do have an interior dimension that I'd like to show you guys. So if I select that I can just click and drag out a segment and this dimension will locate the interior surface of the wall and then in your default settings for the interior dimension you can adjust whether it locates the surface or the framing so that can be really helpful. 
Um, but now I think we kind of understand the basics of how the wall and the dimensions tools work. Um, so you can continue this workflow to complete your floor plan. But to save some time, I'm going to just open up a plan or an iteration of this plan that I have created with the walls completed. Now you'll notice in this plan that I have this reference grid that's displaying um, and I had that turned off in my first but if you want to turn that on and off you can come up to view select reference grid here and you can toggle that on and off in your plan. If I zoom in here in my dollhouse view you'll see that I have this wall here between my living area and my entryway and I want that wall to exist in my plan view but I just want to toggle that to invisible so if I double click on that wall under the general panel you can come down to options and mark that wall as invisible and select OK um, and then new with Home Designer 2020 we just have an invisible wall toggle on your bottom toolbar so we haven't really talked about the bottom toolbar yet but that's just when you have an object selected that gives you tools to further interact with your selected object and then I also want to come around here and show you a room divider tool that we have. So for my entryway here, I want to make this a separate room from the rest of my living area. And I'll show you why room definition is important in a moment. Um, but for now, I'm going to come over to my wall tools here, and I'm going to grab this room divider. And it works just like the other wall tools. You just click and drag it out. And then if I select that room, you can see that, that it's now its own space. And the room type brings with it a lot of very important information about the floor structure, um, how the foundation is going to build, and the materials for that room and so forth. So I'm going to come over here and this is going to be my kitchen area. So I'm just going to click in that space and what I'm going to do is double click to open up that room. And this is going to bring up my room specification dialog. And right off the bat, if you're familiar working in our other home designer software programs, you'll notice that with 2020, there's this new story pull preview off to the right over here. I'm going to come over under the general panel to the room type. And I'm going to change this to a kitchen space. And I'll go ahead and select OK. And notice in my 3D view that the walls have been adjusted to this white color. Um, to reflect the default settings that I had set up for the kitchen. I'm also going to come over here to my garage and again I'm just going to adjust this to be a garage here and then if I come under the structure panel with Home Designer Professional you're going to have some further control over the structure and I can see that the floor structure is using this it's four inches and if I hit edit I can see that it's using concrete and that's because this is a garage space so when I hit OK I can see that I now have that concrete slab under the garage and then I'm also going to come under my master bedroom here and I'm going to adjust this to be a master bedroom and then under the structure panel I do want to change the uh, finished ceiling height here so I'm just going to highlight that and notice when I do that in this story pull preview off to the right that dimension is now red to indicate that I have that highlighted and I'm going to change this to a custom height of 133 and an eighth I'm going to hit tab on my keyboard and that'll update my story pull preview and then I'll select OK so that completes the adjustments that I'd like to make to the interior of the house. But if I come over here, I do want to add in um, some exterior porches. So let's take a look at an image of the front of the house again to remind you guys here. And notice that we have these two front porch areas. So back in the software. So I'm going to come grab the room divider tool and just draw out some porch areas here. And I'll dimension these. This one will be 12 feet. And this front porch will be 8 feet. Okay, so then I'm going to come in here and double click on this room to open it up for specification. I'm going to adjust the room type to be a porch. Under the structure panel, I do want to come down under ceiling and uncheck roof over this room that will also remove the ceiling over this room and then with Home Designer Professional I can make adjustments to the floor structure so I'm gonna go ahead and select edit and what I want to do is just increase the thickness of this slab to account for my terrain so I'm gonna change that to 24 inches 
select OK. Then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing in this porch room as well. The thickness of this room will be 20 inches because I will have a sloping terrain that we'll review later. All right, and select OK. So that completes the layout of the house and now I'd like to begin adding in doors and windows so I'm going to come over here to my door parent tool and you'll notice that I've got quite a few different door options and then new with Home Designer 2020 I have this fixed door, barn door, and shower door but I'm just going to grab this hinge door here and I'm going to zoom in and I'll place a door in my garage area and notice as I move my cursor back and forth that's going to adjust the open and the hinge side here. And then if I select the door in my bottom toolbar, I also have these toggles to adjust the open and the hinge side as well. And then if you zoom in, this door is editable in 3D view. So if I select it, I have these edit handles that will allow me to adjust the width. And watch as I make this door greater than 48 inches wide, it automatically turns into a double door. I can also double click on the door to open it up for specification. So I get this preview off to the right here and I can make quite a few adjustments to this door. So under my general panel I have this drop down for the door style and I have all these different options to choose from and then I can also browse out to the library if I want to grab a manufacturer specific door um, and then I can adjust the size and the position. I'm going to change the width back to 38. If I come under the, over to the left here I have all these different panels. Um, to control my casing, my lintel, if I want to add lights, if it were like a panel door. Um, I can adjust the hardware. And then with Home Designer Professional, you have further customization over the framing and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. And I do want to grab this door here and just quickly dimension it out. And you'll see that these dimension tools work very similar to what we used with the walls. Um, so I'll select the door, select the dimension. I get that input dialog. I'm going to make this 3 foot 6 inches from the wall. And that will move the door accordingly. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of this overview camera. And scroll around here because I want to take a floor camera in my kitchen space. So I'll come up here to my camera tools and select this full camera. And then what you do is you just click and you drag out in your space here. And I would like to place a kitchen window. So I'll come up here to my window tools. Again, I have quite a few different window options, bay, box, bow windows. And then I also have a pass through and a wall niche tool. Um, I'm just going to use a standard window. So I will click to place that in my plan and then I'm going to double click on it to open it up for specification. And again, here you'll have many different types that you can choose from. And then I do want to adjust the size. So the width is going to be 28 inches and the height is 52. And then I have all these panels off to the left here for further customization. Um, so I do want to come down here to the arch and I'm going to add a broken arch here and then I'm going to adjust the height to be six inches so I'll hit tab on my keyboard and then I can see that preview over here I'll go ahead and select OK now I want to make some copies of this window so with it selected in my bottom toolbar I have this copy and paste in place tool so I'll select that and that's going to make a copy of this window and then I can click the edit handle to drag it off to the side here and then what I'd like to do is grab that first window and I want to make another copy of it on the other side so I have three windows so I'm going to come down to my bottom toolbar and I have this copy paste tool I'm going to select that and then when I do I'll get the option to reflect about objects so I will select that and then what you need to do is just bring your cursor over the object that you'd like to reflect the copy about. Single click and now that third window is placed accordingly. And this reflect about option is only available with Home Designer Professional. So if you're using the other um, software programs, you'll just need to create another copy and move it into place. Okay, so I think you guys now understand how the door and window tools work. So I'll go ahead and close out of this camera view. Um, and I'm going to close out of this plan view. 
And then what I'm going to do is actually open up another iteration of my plan with the doors and windows placed. And so I'll go ahead and select open. And now I'd like to review the foundation and then add a second story. Um, so as we've been designing, the foundation has been automatically building just by default. So up here at the top of my screen, um, I have this floor level. I'm currently on floor level one. I can change the floor reference and go down to floor zero, which is where my foundation is. And then if I come up to the top of my screen, I can just do another dollhouse view here and then see how that foundation is building. And if I want to make any adjustments to that, I can come up to the top of my screen to build and I can come down to floor and then build foundation. And here I have three primary foundation types that I can build in home designer software. Um, so I can create walls with footings if I'd like a crawl space or a basement design. Um, I can also build with grade beams on piers or on a monolithic slab. And then with Home Designer Professional, you have further customization for the structure of your foundation. But I'll go ahead and select OK. And now I'd like to move up to the first floor. And I want to build um, a second story. So I'm going to come up to build, come down to floor, and then build. And this is going to open up a dialog box that's going to ask me if I want to derive the new second floor from the first floor plan, so matching the layout or if I want to make a new blank floor. I'll go ahead and select to derive it from the first floor and select OK. And then this is going to bring up the second floor default. So this is where I can make adjustments to the structure or the ceiling height and so forth of my second story. Um, off to the left, I also have control over the floor moldings um, and the materials. I'm going to go ahead and just select OK. And you can see that this has automatically brought me up to the second floor. And now I'd like to tile my views side by side. And in my plan view, I'll move up to the second story as well. And now I want to use a tool called the reference floor display. So this is going to allow me to see the walls on the floor below on the floor that I'm working on. So I'm going to come up to the top of my screen to tools and come down to floor reference display. And here I can select which floor I'm referencing, but I'm just going to select reference display and that will automatically reference the floor below. And then I don't want a second story over my garage or my master bedroom. So what I'm going to do is just take this first wall here and extend it up to connect to the back of the house. And then I'm going to bring this wall back just to have this second story area here. And then I can go ahead and delete these outlying walls over here. Okay, and now you can see that roof plane there. This is because my roof is automatically generating. I will go in later and make adjustments to the roof, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. For now, what I'd like to do is go ahead and open up another iteration of the plan that has the walls and doors and windows drawn in for the second story, since you guys are already familiar with those tools. Um, so I'll just exit out of this plan and open my second story plan here. Okay, great. So this is my second story here. You can see that I've got a bonus room, Jack and Jill bathroom, and two bedrooms. I now want to create this loft area here with a staircase. So let me bring up an image of the staircase for you guys. Okay, so you can see that I've got this L-shaped stairway that connects the first and second floors. Um, and it's open below, and then I've got this loft above. So I'm going to go ahead and get back into the software here and what I'd like to do is come down to my first floor and I'm going to grab a full camera and I'm just going to click and drag towards where I'd like to place the stairway and then I'm going to go ahead and tile these views vertically I'm going to come in my plan view up here to the top of my screen to my stair tools and I've got this draw stairs option this is um, to create custom stair segments um, then I have a straight stairs tool. This is more so for creating stairs between short distances. Then there's a curve option, L-shaped stair, and a U-shaped stair, and a ramp. I'm going to grab this auto L-shaped stair, and it's going to ask me if I want that to go in a clockwise or a counterclockwise direction. Clockwise is fine, so I'll select OK. And then watch as I get that preview here, and I bump this staircase up against the left. It's going to automatically adjust the direction there and then I can just click to place that into place in my plan. 
Now there's a few adjustments that I'd like to make. I want to shorten up this stair segment so it's just about four treads on that first section. I want to change the baluster material to black and then I'm going to remove the railing at the wall here. So I'll come over here and select this stair segment and then I'm just going to grab this edit handle and pull it in so there's about four treads there. And you'll notice that that automatically updates. And then what I'd like to do is just go ahead and select this stair segment and double click on it for specification. And then here under the general panel, this is where you can control your tread depth and your riser heights. Um, so under advanced options, if you select lock tread depth under your stair sections over here, that'll give you the option to adjust the tread depth. And then same goes for automatic heights. If you unselect automatic heights, then you can put in some custom values. And then Home Designer Professional also has this Make Best Fit option. So if that's highlighted, you can go ahead and just select it and the software will automatically adjust the riser height and the tread depth to make the best fit for your stair segments. I'm going to come over here to the railing panel and under railing at wall, I'm going to remove the check mark next to the left side. And then you'll notice in my preview that that railing at the wall has now turned off. And then under the materials panel, I do want to grab that baluster color. I can come down to select material and this is going to open up my library browser. And notice that it's already filtered down to the current color that I'm using, this color white. So I can grab a color from my library here or if I come up to this plan materials panel, this is going to list out all of the materials that are currently being used in my plan and I can come down to this color black material and apply that by selecting OK. Great, so that completes my stair case and I do want to add a stairwell now to create that loft area. Um, so with that selected and my bottom toolbar, I have this auto stairwell tool that I'll just simply click. And you'll notice here that I have that automatic hole in the ceiling platform that was created for that stairwell. And then there's also a railing that's placed. Um, if I move up a level, I can see that railing placed on the second floor here. I do want this whole area to be a loft area. So what I'm going to do is in my plan view, I'm going to come up to the second story and I'm going to make adjustments and move this railing over. So I'll grab that railing segment, grab this edit handle and just swing it over. And then there's a diamond edit handle with Home Designer Professional that will allow me to draw out another segment. And then I can select that and just bump it into place there. And then if you don't have that edit diamond edit handle tool, um, the railing tools are up here at the top of your screen and you can just grab a straight railing to draw that out. And then I'm going to delete these extra railings here from the original stairwell that we no longer need. You can see now that I have this loft area created for my entryway. All right, so that completes the stairway. So I'll go ahead and close out of that camera view there and I'll move back down to the first floor. And I'd like to begin drawing the roof. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up an image of the roof here. And as you can see, I've got these gable roof planes here. I have this Dutch gable off to the right and then I've got um, some custom porch roof planes as well. So let's get back into the program and we'll start working on that here. So I'm going to take a 3D camera view and you can see how the roof is building by default because remember my auto rebuild roof option is turned on. So this is just my default roof out of the box. If I come up here to build roof and then I have the option to build roof. I also have some different tools here. This is where you'll find like a skylight and your floating dormers and then there's some additional tools available for home designer professional. But I'll select build roof and if I come over here down to the roof styles panel, this is a preview of the different roof types that can be created in home designer software. Um, so I'll come back up to the roof panel here and this is where you can control your pitch and your overhang and then there's some additional structural controls with Home Designer Professional. Um, but notice that my auto rebuild roofs is turned on here and then I'm going to go ahead and just select OK and I'd like to make these two gables first so to do that what I'll do is select the wall and then in my bottom toolbar I have this change to gable wall. So you can just select that to quickly change back and forth between a hip and a gable. I'll do that same thing here. 
And then I'm going to scroll around to this side of the house and remember that this is that Dutch gable wall here. So to do that, I'll double click on this wall to open it up for specification. And off to the left, I have this roof panel here. And you can see that I've got quite a few different roof options. I'm going to select this Dutch gable wall option and I'm going to adjust the in from baseline height to 100. Hit tab on my keyboard and I'm going to leave the pitch at just the standard 8 inch pitch here and I'll select OK. And you can see that that Dutch gable is created. So that's just an example of some of the automatic tools that are available in the software. Home Designer Professional does have some manual tools for um, custom roof planes as well and I would like to show you an example of that. So I'll go ahead and tile my views here and I'd like to work in my plan view for this. So I'm going to come back up here to the top of my screen to my roof parent tool and I'll come down to this roof plane option and then I can simply click and drag out where I'd like the roof plane. And I'm going to get this dialog box that's going to come up here. This is just telling me that my automatic roofs are turned on um, so I'll need to turn them off in order to do any custom roof planes. So I'll select yes to turn them off and then I'll click to drop in that roof plane and this is telling me that the layer for the roof planes is not displayed. So this is asking me if I want to turn on the um, roof planes layer. And I'm going to select yes and I can see that custom roof plane comes in there. So what I'd like to do is just double click on that to open it up and I'm going to make some adjustments. So here I can control the height and the pitch. So what I'd like to do is change the pitch. I'm going to change that to 3 inches and then what I'm going to do is actually select lock pitch and this will allow me to change the baseline height. I'm going to change that to 131 and I'll just select OK and you can see that that updates there. And then in my plan view I'm going to adjust the dimension to be 4 feet deep and then I'm going to make it 9 foot 2 inches wide. Um, then I'm going to use this tool called the center object tool so with that roof plane selected in my bottom toolbar I have this center object so I'll select that and then hover my cursor over that door and click and then the roof plane will be centered over the door. So now I'd like to add some brackets from my library to support this roof plane. So I'm going to come up here to my library parent icon. It looks like three books stacked next to each other and I'll select that to open up my library browser. Then I'm going to come down here to my user catalog and I have this quick start webinar folder that I'll expand. I'm going to grab this bracket. And I'm going to grab that bracket and just place it in my plan view and then I'm going to grab the edit handle which is this triangle handle here and just rotate that bracket around and then I'll bump it into place and then I'm going to double click on that to open it up because as you could see in the 3D view it was coming in quite low there and I want it to um, come right up to the bottom of that roof plane. So I'm going to change the floor to top here to be 125 and hit tab on my keyboard and select OK. Then I'll bump that right into place. So then what I'll do with that selected, I'm just going to again use that copy reflect about tool that we used in the beginning for the kitchen windows. I'll reflect it about that front door and my brackets are placed. So I'll close out of my library browser. I do have that other roof segment that I want to add off to the right over here above the porch, but I, to save time, I'm just going to go ahead and open up another iteration of the plan with that completed. But don't save. And then I'll take an overview camera so you can see what that looks like. So I have that custom roof plane created and then I also have these columns. These are just items that I've selected from the library and placed in the plan. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this camera view and I am going to take a full camera in the kitchen space. So here's my kitchen space. Now let me go ahead and open up an image to show you guys what this is going to look like when we're finished. Okay, so here we go. We're going to be dropping in cabinetry, um, some appliances and fixtures from the library. We'll cover some lighting tools and electrical. We'll work with some a custom backsplash and shelving. 
Um, and then we'll also be placing in some soffits to add some custom ceiling design. So let me go ahead and get back into the software here. And I'll just tile these views like we've done. Zoom in. Okay, great. And I want to go ahead and start with a base cabinet. So at the top of my screen, I have my cabinet tools here. Um, I've got a base cabinet, wall, full height, and that soffit tool I was referring to, which we'll use later for the ceiling design. Um, and then there's some additional tools for shelves, partitions, and then with Home Designer, Architectural and Professional, there's a custom countertop and a custom backsplash. But I'm going to grab that base cabinet tool and I'll just move my cursor along my wall here and notice when I get into a corner Home Designer automatically creates a corner cabinet um, so that's a nice automatic feature there but I just want a basic um, base cabinet so I'll click to place that there and then I can edit the width of this in my 3D view um, I want that to be 36 inches wide I can also double click to open it up and I can make all sorts of adjustments to the cabinet in my dialog box here. So under the general panel I can adjust the style. Um, so there's quite a few different types to choose from. I can also adjust the size and position. I want to leave it at 36 by 36 and 24. Um, I have control over the countertop, the backsplash, the toe kick, and do bear in mind that with depending on which version of the software some of these dialogues might look a little different home designer professional does have more cabinetry features than the other two software products I'm gonna come under backsplash and I want to actually remove it so I'm just gonna put a zero in the height value here and those are the only changes that I want to make to this particular cabinet so I'll go ahead and select OK and I'll place in one more base cabinet here just click to drop that in my plan, double click to open it up. So I'm going to come in here and adjust the width to be 15 inches. It's tab on my keyboard. Again, I'm going to remove the backsplash for this cabinet as well. And then what I'd like to do is I want to adjust the swing side so this door opens the other way. So what I'll do is click on that door panel in the preview. And that's going to bring me over into my front panel controls. And with that, um, face item selected, I can come down under here to item type and change that to an auto write. Um, and again, this dialog might look a little different depending on what program you're working in. Um, but those are the only adjustments I'll be making to this particular cabinet. If you want to review the other features, you know, with Home Designer Professional, there's control over the box construction. Um, so with Professional, you can specify if a cabinet is framed or frameless, the overlay and inset and so forth. There's also panels for moldings and materials and um, further customization. But I'll go ahead and select OK for now. And then I'm just going to grab that cabinet and bring it over here to bump it up to the first cabinet. And to save some time, I've created an architectural block of the remaining cabinet items in my library. So what that is, is an architectural block is a way to multiple select objects and group them together and then save them to your library as one item that you can then reference in another plan. So if, for example, you have like a custom um, island or a vanity that you'd like to use again in a future plan, um, you can group them together in a block. So to do that, I'll show you an example real quick. With this first cabinet selected, I'll hold down my shift key, select the other cabinet, and then in my bottom toolbar I have this red and blue square. It's called Make Architectural Block. I'll just select that. That's going to group those items together. If I wanted to explode that block, I can do so with this tool in the bottom of my screen. I also have this add to library button that I can select and that'll pop that into my user library. For now I'm going to explode that and I will go ahead and open up my library browser and I'm going to get into my user catalog again into that quick start webinar folder I've created and I'm just going to grab my kitchen cabinets. And this is a larger architectural block so I'm actually going to place it outside of my kitchen space. and then I will need to rotate it around here and I'm going to use my point to point move tool so this is available with Home Designer Professional and how it works is with an item selected in your bottom toolbar you have this point to point move tool so I'll click on that and I'm going to click on the corner of my architectural block here and then I'm going to click in the corner of my pantry way 
and that will just move that into place. And if you don't have the point to point move tool, I believe it's only available with Home Designer Professional. With the other programs, you can use this move edit handle to adjust the placement of that architectural block. And then with that in place, I just want to explode that. So I'll come down to my bottom toolbar and just hit explode architectural block. And now you'll notice that these are each individual um, cabinet items. And then if I zoom around here, you can see that my windows are kind of cutting into my cabinetry there. So I want to center those onto this cabinet that's going to hold my sink. Um, so I'm just going to hold down my shift key to group select these items and then I'll use my um, center object tool to center them on that base cabinet like so. And now I'm going to come over to my library and I'm going to grab this triple undermount sink and I'm just going to click to place it in that cabinet there. And then if I zoom around here you can see that Home Designer automatically cuts a hole in the cabinet um, to place that fixture. And then I also want to um, go ahead and close out of this camera view here and I am going to take a um, orthographic camera view now of this wall over here because I'm going to add in the range and the hood and then I'm going to do that custom um, backsplash that you saw there. So I'm going to come up to the top of my screen and I'm going to grab this wall elevation camera and I'm just going to click and drag to create that wall elevation and then I'm going to come over to my um, user catalog and grab the this old world range and hood. These items can be found in the core catalogs and then I'm just going to click in my plan view to place that and then I'm going to select that architectural block and just explode it so that those are individual items once more. And the next thing I want to do is add in that backsplash. So I'm going to come up here to my cabinet tools and under my cabinet parent tool I have this custom backsplash tool. This is available with Home Designer Architectural and Professional. If I select that tool you can click and drag out a custom backsplash shape and then if you select that you'll notice that there's um, some different edit capabilities just like any other polyline in the software. So for example there's a break line tool that I can use to add a break um, to add an extra edit handle and then I can adjust the shape. I'm going to go ahead and delete that custom backsplash and select my custom backsplash tool once more and then I'm going to simply click above my cabinets and Home Designer is going to automatically place a custom backsplash behind the cabinets. So if I get back into my floor plan here I can take a floor camera and we can see what that backsplash looks like and then I want to go ahead and add in that wall niche here. So I'm going to come up to my window tools and come down to the wall niche and I'm just going to click to place that on the wall and then I'm going to double click on it to open it up for specification. I'm going to leave the width at 32 but I do want to change the height to be 20 and then I'm going to adjust the floor to bottom to be 40 and just like I did with my uh, kitchen windows I'm going to add an arch. So I'm going to select the broken arch again and just change that to a 6 inch height. And one more change I'd like to make is to the materials. So the backing right now for this wall niche is using a drywall material. I'm going to hit select material and I know that I'm looking for a material called parchment. So I'll just type that into the search bar and then filter down to the material I'm looking for and select OK. Great, so the tile sizing is coming in a little large here on my um, backing so what I'd like to do is adjust the material definition. At the top of my screen I have this adjust material definition tool that looks like a kind of like a rainbow. If you select that you can click on the material you'd like to make adjustments to and this will give you the material name, the colors it's using, the pattern, scaling, and so forth. I'd like to come over here to the texture panel on the left and under the scale I'm going to adjust it to decrease um, the size of the texture to reflect a smaller brick size and I'm going to change this to 20 and because the retain aspect ratio is turned on it's going to automatically adjust the Y scale as well. 
Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and select OK. And I can see now that that reflects a smaller brick size. So while we're talking about materials, I do want to show you guys another tool that I use quite frequently. I'm going to um, grab just a base cabinet and drop that in my plan here to kind of give you guys an example. Okay, so I'm going to come over here to my library browser and I'm going to grab a color. And when I do that, you'll notice that my cursor adjusts and I now have this spray can icon following my cursor. And then on my bottom left toolbar, you'll see that I have um, different components. So this is a material painter, and this is going to allow me to replace like materials either on a component for an entire object, replace all like materials in a room, on the floor, or for the plan. So for this particular cabinet here, if I select to replace all like materials on the component, you'll see that that door panel is adjusted. I'll also do the toe kick here just as an example. If I switch over to object mode and I select the cabinet, it replaces all like materials in the objects. If I do the room, you'll notice it replaces all of that cabinet material in the room. I'm going to go ahead and select undo and I will delete that cabinet there, close out of my library browser. And what I'd like to do is just um, load the material from this wall cabinet, or excuse me, this full height cabinet, and apply it to my pantry walls. So at the top of my screen, I can select this material eyedropper tool, and it will allow me to load that material. Notice I get the spray can again, and then I can apply it um, to these walls. Right now, remember I'm in the room mode, so I want to make sure to go back to component. Can zoom out and around here and apply it to each individual wall in component mode. Um, so that's just some tools that you can use for to adjust your materials. So let's go ahead and add in those shelves now. So I'm going to tile my views again, the plan view here, and I'm going to come up to my cabinet tools, grab a shelf, and I'm just going to place that over this base cabinet. And I'm going to double click on it to open it for specification. The width I'm going to change to 30, the height to 1.5, I'll leave the depth at 12. I am going to adjust the floor to bottom to be 83. And then under the materials panel, I'll select that material and I'm going to do a search here for hickory. Oops. And I'm just going to grab this naughty hickory option, select OK, and OK. So I'll move that over a little ways here, and then I'm going to make some copies of it. So in my bottom toolbar, with Home Designer Professional, I have this Transform Replicate Object tool. I'll go ahead and select that, and here I can select to make a copy. I'm going to change this and make two copies, and then I can move those copies in the X Delta, the Y Delta, or the Z Delta. So the X Delta is going to be left and right on your plan view, the Y Delta is up and down in your plan view, and then the Z Delta is the height value in your 3D view. So I want to move them down, so I'm going to do the height value, so Z Delta, and I'm going to move them down, so I need to add in a negative, and then I'm going to go 16 inches. Then I'll select OK, and you can see those copies come in there. So then I'm just going to hold down my shift key to select all three of those and I'm going to use that same copy paste and then reflect about objects tool and just reflect them about this range like so. All right, so that completes the backsplash and the shelving. I do want to add in the soffit here for my custom um, ceiling now. So I'll grab my soffit tool up here at the top of my screen and I'll click to place that. Now I'm leaving it, I'm letting it overhang that full height cabinet a little ways there to account for the um, molding profile at the top and I'll do that on both sides there. You can dimension that out if you'd like to be more accurate but I'm just going to go ahead and um, drag that out across the top of all my cabinets there and then I'm going to open this soffit up for specification and I'm going to leave the width as it is, I will adjust the height to be 9 inches and then I'm going to mark to place this under the ceiling and that will automatically adjust the floor to top and floor to bottom heights for me. Then I'm going to come over here to the molding panel 
and I'm going to select to add a new molding profile and I'll browse through my library to my crown moldings. If I select this folder I get a preview of all of its um, contents off to the right. I'm just going to grab this CA16 profile and select OK. And then I want to change it to be 3 by 3 inches and select OK. Great, so that's how you can place soffits. Um, the rest of my custom sailing design is done with the same soffit tool, so I'm just going to go ahead and open up my library browser to where I've saved a um, architectural block and I'll place that and move that into place and then I can just explode that block and I have my ceiling placed. While I'm in my user library I'm just going to grab my butcher block island here and I'll click to place it in my plan and then I'm just going to select it and center it on this soffit. Then I'll close out of my library browser and I'll pan around here in my 3D camera view and what I'd like to do next is add in some lighting and electrical. So I'm going to come up here to the top of my screen to my electrical parent tools and you'll see that I've got quite a few different options here. I'm going to select just a standard can light and I'll click to place that in my plan here. And what I'd like to do is dimension that now. Oops. So I'm going to come up to the top of my screen and grab this end-to-end -end dimension and I'm going to go from the light to the wall on either side and I'm just going to select that light, select a dimension and make it 5 foot 2 inches from either wall. Then I can come in here and delete these dimension lines just by selecting them and hitting delete on my keyboard. I'll grab that light and I'm going to use that transform replicate object tool one more time. So I'll select to make a copy. I'll make two copies. Okay, I'm going to move them. First I'll move them left on my plan view, so in the X delta, a negative 64 inches. Hit OK. With those two copies selected, I'll hold down my shift key and grab that original light. Use that transform replicate object tool once more. I'll create two more copies of all three of these lights and move them in the Y delta negative 50 inches and select OK. Great, and then I have this extra light that comes in up here in my ceiling that I don't need because I have that pendant so I'll go ahead and just delete that can light. And then I'm going to place a few more can lights above my shelving here and then also one more above the sink. And notice when I drop that in it is automatically placed in the soffit. I'm also going to open up my library and grab a pendant, this glass jar pendant, and I'm just going to place two of these on either side of the sink as well. Um, I'll close back out of my library browser and if I zoom in here, I want to show you guys how you can use the um, switches in the connect electrical tools. So I'll come up to the top of my screen and grab a switch here and I'm just going to place two switches and then I'm going to come back up to my electrical tools and grab this connect electrical and if I scroll in here I can select a switch and just click and drag to connect that to this pendant and this pendant and then this other switch I'm going to connect to the can light over the sink. So that's how the um, electrical works there for the switches. If you wanted to place in outlets, you have these um, outlet tools here. And then I also have this auto place outlet option. If I select that, you'll notice my cursor changes to an outlet icon. And this will allow me to just click in any room and that's going to automatically place outlets for that room. Now because this room is defined as a kitchen space, Home Designer is going to automatically place the correct number of GFCI outlets in the room. Alright, so that completes our kitchen design and the electrical. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this kitchen camera here. 
and let's review the framing tools. Um, so with Home Designer Suite and Architectural, the framing is automatically generated and there is this um, framing overview camera that you can use to see the framing. With Home Designer Professional, if you come up to Builds and down to Framing, you have all these additional tools to specify your framing. So if I select Build Framing, I can select Automatically Build Floor and Ceiling Framing. Then I have control over the subflooring um, for each individual floor. I can also select to automatically build the wall framing. Um, I can control the openings um, and then the roof. I can automatically build the roof framing and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. We'll take a framing overview camera here and take a look at how that's building in 3D. Um, and then if I get in and select each individual item, those are editable in Home Designer Professional. And you can also come up to the top of your screen if you're in a plan view. I'll go ahead and close out of that elevation. And there's additional controls for your joists, your roof framing, and then if you wanted to add any poster beams and so forth. So there's really a lot of control for your framing with Home Designer Professional. I'm not going to get into this in too much detail right now. We do have additional um, training videos on our website that I definitely recommend checking out. For now, let's go ahead and dive into some of the landscaping features. I'm going to go ahead and pull open an image to remind you guys of what the terrain is going to look like. Okay, so you can see that we have a driveway and sidewalk. Um, I've created some steps up to the porches. I'm using a brick um, material. I've actually used the soffit tool over here to create these pillars and this raised garden bed. Um, and then there's also some plants from the library in a backdrop. So I'll show you a couple of these features. I'm not going to go into too much detail. We do have another terrain um, training webinar that you can definitely go check out. Um, but let's just get back into the software here and I'll show you a couple things. So if you come up to the top of your screen, you can come down to terrain and then create terrain perimeter. And this is going to drop in a terrain perimeter. Um, this is the boundary line for all of your terrain items and how they generate in 3D. So let's go ahead and close out of that roof view and take just a standard perspective full overview here. And we can see that terrain perimeter there. I'll tile my views side by side again. And if I select that, this is editable like any other polyline based object. So I can adjust the dimensions, let's say 150 feet wide. And I can grab that edit handle and move it into place. And then again, there's some break line tools and you can adjust the shape. You can also come up here to file and down to import and then import your own terrain data in a, or a GPS data file. And if you wanted to add in any elevation information to your terrain, you can come up to terrain and come down to elevation data. And here you can add in individual elevation points, elevation lines, a full elevation region. Um, there's also these modifiers if you'd like to add in a raised region or a hill, a flat region and so forth. Then you can also come down here to a garden bed or a water feature, stepping stones, roadways and sidewalks. And a lot of these tools work very similar as far as editing goes. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab a garden bed. I'll grab this polyline garden bed and show you guys how that works in the software. So I'm going to scroll in over here. And I'm just going to draw out a garden bed in this area. And then I'm going to grab that garden bed and select this break line tool in my bottom toolbar. I'll add a break here for an extra edit handle and then I can select that, drag it across and if we zoom in here in my 3D camera view you can see that garden bed come in there. I do want to add one more break and then I'm going to grab this corner edit handle and just adjust the shape there a little bit. Now if you open this garden bed up for specification you can adjust the height off of the terrain um, as well as the thickness of the garden bed. You can also come down here to this distributed plants panel and then here you can select a plant from the library to distribute throughout the garden bed. 
you can also grab plants from the library and place them individually. So I'll go ahead and select OK here to close out of that. And in Home Designer software, there's a plant chooser tool. So if you come up to the top of your screen to terrain, you can come down here to plant and then to plant chooser. And then this will allow you to come in and do a search through all of the plants in the library by the common name or the scientific names and then all sorts of other characteristics of the plant that you're looking for. So that's a great way to filter through the library for some plants. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And that's all I'm going to cover on the terrain. Um, like I said, a lot of the features will work very similar. But the next thing that I'd like to cover is going to be the material list in the software. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this 3D camera view. And I can come up to the top of my screen to Tools and down to Material List and I'm going to select to calculate a material for all floors. You can also calculate the materials in a particular room or in a particular area and then Home Designer Professional has some additional tools to manage your material list. But I'll select Calculate Materials for all floors and this is going to bring up my material list here and you'll notice that this is a very comprehensive list of everything that's used in the plan here. Um, and then you can also add in your pricing information. So for example, for this concrete, I can adjust the price to be $90 per cubic yard. Hit tab on my keyboard and that's going to update my total cost um, throughout the material list. With Home Designer Professional, you can come up here to the top of your screen and specify whether or not you want it to list the linear length, a cut list, a buy list, or mixed reporting. Um, and you can also export the material list. So if you come to File, you can come down to Export Material List. Um, all of the programs can export a text file, and then Home Designer Professional can also export to an Excel file. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, this material list here. I don't need to save it. And I'm actually going to open up a new plan here called my final plan. And I'll use this final plan to create the layout sheet. So I'll go ahead and close out of that roof plan. Don't need to save it. And with Home Designer Professional, you have a separate file type called a layout sheet where you can send different views from your plan to the layout sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and open one up open layout and then I have this layout template file that I'm going to go ahead and open and you'll notice that that opens as a new tab here and off to the right there's all this text information for your um, title block for your layout so you can zoom in here you can add in a date you can add in the title of your plan the designer and so forth. You can import an image for your logo. There's really a lot you can do here. You'll find the text tools at, your t at the top of your screen. If you'd like to add in any custom text, it's up here to the left. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how you can actually get content onto your layout sheet. So I'm going to come back into my plan view and I have these cameras that I've saved here. So I'm going to just open up this elevation camera that I've created and you'll see that there is some dimension information off to the left. I'll show you how you can do that if you just come up to the top of your screen. I've just used an end-to-end -end dimension here. I'll select that and I just came from the roof plane down to the top of the foundation. You can then select that dimension line and there's an edit handle if I zoom in here and you can pull it off to the side of your elevation. So that's how easy it is to add dimension information to your elevation. And you'll notice that this elevation camera does have a rendering technique applied to it. So at the top of my screen here, I have these rendering techniques. I can select standard. There's also a vector view, a glass house, technical illustration, and a watercolor. I've used the technical illustration. Um, the physically based rendering technique is new with Home Designer 2020. This is going to be available in an interior 3D camera view. Um, so that's why you'll see it grayed out there. But I'm just using a standard technical illustration here. So to get this 
elevation to my layout sheets, I'm going to come up to the top of my screen and I have this send to layout option. So if I select that, it's going to bring up this dialog and then I can choose um, whether or not I want to send the entire plan view, the current screen, or the current screen as an image. If I send it as an image, it's going to lose its scaling information. I'm going to go ahead and select current screen, so just what's being displayed in my screen here. And then I'm going to come down to the scaling and I'm going to adjust it to be 1 8 inch equals 1 foot. And I'm going to select OK. And then you'll see this come in on my layout. I can select that and this dialog box is editable and only what is displayed within the box will display on your layout sheet. And I'm just going to go ahead and move that elevation up. Um, and then you'll notice I have further control in my bottom toolbar to edit this. But I'm going to come back into my plan view because now I would like to add in this layout here. Um, so one thing that I do want to do before I send this view to my layout is to turn off my camera layers. So I'm going to come up to my layer display options. Um, if you have Home Designer Professional, there's this parent tool at the top of your screen. But if not, you can just go to tools and then display options. And I'm going to type in C for camera. And then I'm going to filter down to my cameras and turn those off. And then I'll select OK. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and select Send to Layout. And again, I'll do the current screen and I'll just adjust it to 1 8 equals 1 foot. Select OK. And again, to save some time, I'm just going to come up here and close out of this layout. And I'm going to go ahead and open up a finished layout file just so you guys can kind of see what that'll look like. And there we are. I have the front elevation and then the first floor layout with dimension information as well as the second floor layout. Great, so that is a super fast overview of how the layout sheet works in Home Designer Professional. We do have additional training resources on our website if you guys are interested, so please jump over there and check those out. But this does conclude today's demonstration. So thank you all so much for attending. We do have a free trial version for each of our individual products at homedesignersoftware.com. We also have a 30-day satisfaction guarantee on all new purchases or upgrades. Um, if you're an existing customer of ours, make sure to check out our upgrade discounts. And again, we have hundreds of training videos and how-to articles in our knowledge base to assist you guys with getting started. There's also that Home Talk user forum if you want to interact with other um, users of Home Designer software.